Hello, it's Lee with AppointmentReminder.com. Wanted to go through the new Google Calendar setup with AppointmentReminder.com. We have a new look to the system. So, as of February 2023, we'll go through the system, show you the functionality of connecting with Google Calendar to AppointmentReminder.com and some of the things that you can do with it. So, what I've got here is I've got my Google Calendar open and it's very simple. So, it just works with the sync between the two systems. And all we need to do is go to a particular date and set an appointment with somebody. So we're going to make a, a test appointment here for Donald Duck. And we're just going to put a phone number on for him to send him a little text message when we get the appointment put together. And then we just need to put an email as well. So we'll put this on there. Now that's all the system really needs to send the reminder. You can put that information up here on the uh, event title line or down below in the description of the event for Google. Um, there is some functionality to put it in the guest field here and it'll pull over the email uh, from your guest information instead of having to put the email up here. But for today, we're just going to put the phone number and email right up here. And we're going to save that. Now from there, we're going to go into our, our appointmentreminder.com account. I've already lined, uh, signed in here and started an account. Um, but it's very simple. What you need to do is go up to settings and then we're going to click on add calendar and then we're going to choose which type of calendar import we're going to do. Uh, the other videos cover the other um, systems that we have but in this case we're going to look at Google Calendar and we'll have to connect to a new account depending on the prompts that you might see. We're just going to connect. In this case we're going to connect to our appointmentreminder.com Google account so it can pull over that information and just click allow here to allow it to have access to the calendar. Now, it's going to prompt you to ask which calendars do you want to bring across? So if you are sharing multiple calendars with additional people, make sure that you select the correct calendars to bring across. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to bring over the one calendar and we're going to use the default appointment reminder script in this case. Uh, if you do make all day appointments and you want to bring those over, you do need to enable this option as well right here and just simply hit connect. That's going to reach out to Google Calendar and sync the calendar. And it is pretty quick. Um, occasionally, depending on the system time or how much is going on, it can take a minute, uh, but hopefully it won't take too long here to bring this in. while we're waiting on that to kind of refresh itself on this, I'm going to show you some of the options that are available inside uh, when hooking up with Google Calendar. So if you go to settings and then go to edit calendar, you'll see the calendar that we just connected from Google. And this is where we're going to be in enabling our, the calendar to be able to send text, email, or voice. So just hit the little gear wheel over here and we're going to hit the edit option. And these are all the options that are available for Google Calendar. Um, along the top, I can choose whether I want text, email, or voice uh, reminders to be going out. Uh, these just kind of populate on their own. If you have business hours from like 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., you can change the way the calendar displays inside appointmentreminder.com. There's an option here, uh, available things open. If you're not open on Saturday, Sunday, you can uncheck that. And then you have the option to choose send reminders on closed days or not. Next on this tab, this is probably the most important part with Google Calendar. You need to check and make sure that uh, all these options are what you want. But we have what we call negative keywords. So if we detect any of these particular words found on the uh, writing of the appointment, then we're not going to send a reminder for that. So if you like to keep the appointment on, uh, the calendar, but you want to type canceled, it will not send a reminder for that person. There's another option, only sync appointments that contain these words. So if you don't want to bring your whole entire Google Calendar over, you can just you know put a word in like reminder or something to that effect that it will pull only that appointment over. The great thing with the Google Calendar integration with our system is that once we get the information, we'll send the reminder but we will also write back to Google Calendar. So in this case, we're going to 
uh, if somebody replies to the message and says, yes, I will be there, we will add the words confirmed to the appointment title in Google Calendar. So there's no need really to log into appointmentreminder.com once this is set up. You can simply put the information in Google Calendar, it'll sync to our system, and then we'll write the uh, information back. Update the event description. In this case, if somebody responds to your appointment reminder, it says, uh, I'm not going to make it. They don't say yes, necessarily yes or no. Uh, we will also add whatever they say to the description of the event uh, down below. So this is the box down below in Google Calendar that we're going to write that. Um, sync all the events is an option. Usually it's off by default. Uh, the two-way sync allows you to use both Appointment Reminder Calendar and the Google Calendar. So if you put an appointment in appointmentreminder.com calendar, and it will write back to the Google uh, Calendar. Now it's not really advisable to do it that way. Um, there are some different use cases where you'd want to do it this way. Um, typically we leave it off. Um, like I said, everything can be done in Google Calendar uh, that you need to do without having to log in. Uh, send both SMS and voice call. If you're gonna be doing voice, you need to turn that on. Uh, change appointment color when the appointment is confirmed. So in this case, you can enable this. When someone says yes, they're going to be there, you can change the appointment color in Google Calendar. So this will actually update back to Google Calendar and change the appointment color to green or whatever uh, choice you, you desire there. Change the appointment color when the appointment is replied to if you choose yes. Maybe you want to put that as like a yellow or a caution. So it's just alerting you, hey, you need to check. We don't really know what they said. And change appointment color when the appointment is canceled. Yes, we'll change this to red. Um, you can do the same thing for reschedule. Um, sync multiple numbers and emails. So if you have multiple people, say a husband and wife, that you're wanting to uh, send a reminder to, you just type in both phone numbers on the title line and or the description, and we will pull both of those numbers off and send a reminder. Um, sync appointments that fall on closed days, yes or no. These are just different options here. Uh, have replies appear at the front of the appointment title. So if they reply and we don't really know what they said, you can add that right at the front of the appointment at the title so you can look at that. Only sync appointments where there's keyword mapping. So this kind of goes back to the same thing on top. Uh, keyword mapping is a whole separate section, but basically if you're using a separate script uh, for a customer, say you've got a, you know, a tax customer and, and maybe you have a financial planning customer or something along those lines, you can send a different uh, script depending on how you set up the keyword mapping. Use client time zone. This comes into play if you're making appointments in multiple time zones. So that way they will receive the appointment reminder in their time zone. Uh, you would, would want to enable that and need to pay uh, very careful attention when you're putting the appointment in appointmentreminder.com that you're using the time zones correctly in order to that to, to work uh, correctly. Sync attendees, that will pull over the information that we talked about on the side. So when you're looking at appointment reminder, or excuse me, at Google Calendar, here on this side in the guest, it'll sync those guest emails. Okay, it's only gonna pull over the emails to the system, but that way you don't have to retype the email. Um, if sync attendees is true, do you want us to match the email address from customers and find the mobile number? So uh, you could use that to search that database of appointmentreminder.com and look up the customer's phone number based upon the email. So those are just general Google uh, Calendar options that are available. And then the next tab over here is replies. So this tells, uh, kind of sets the scenario, what happens when someone replies to the message? So where should replies from your clients be sent to? In this case, we're just gonna send an email to this particular uh, email address. Uh, there's multiple different options here. You can send out a text message, you can send an email and a text, and you can add multiple phone numbers and our emails to this line. You just need to put a comma here and then type it in. No space between uh, the email addresses. And then there's another option, don't send the notification when the reply is. So if you have a lot of customers and they say yes and you don't really care, you, you, you know they're coming, we don't want to be notified, it's just the people that aren't coming we need to know about. So you could type in the word yes here if somebody responds that way. 
there's some other settings here so you can email yourself when uh, a reminder is sent to your client just to let you know hey it's been sent and put an email uh, address in there and then generating booking links this is related to the booking system uh, if you're using that to schedule your clients most people uh, that does not apply to initially so once you're through that point just hit save and then we're going to go back to the calendar and we should be able to go to the 8th of February that we made that appointment with Donald and see that particular uh, appointment. Let's see, I don't remember when we made this. So February, oh, we already messed it up. So we had it as an all day. We're going to change this to a 10 o'clock appointment and then just hit save so that it can come across. Now remember I had sync all day appointments turned off. So we're going to real quickly go and resync this. And it should notice a change, but if not, we're just going to hit the uh, edit button. And once you scroll down this page for your Google Calendar, hit save. It will reach out to Google and resync the calendar as well. Now, that sync should just identify uh, when there's a change to Google Calendar to force it. So it's pretty re real time. Um, but here we can click on the appointment and see, okay, we have Donald Duck. Um, it already picked up his phone number the email address for Donald. And then this comes into play now where we talk about sequencing and scripting. So by default, the system is set up to send a 24 hour text message to Donald and a 24 hour email. This is completely customizable. What you say is completely customizable. When you send it is completely customizable. Uh, we'll kind of go through that in some of the other steps. Uh, I'll show you briefly, but uh, it's a very customizable system. So. If we click on timeline at this point, I can now see Donald Duck's appointment. I can see the text message that's going to be going to this phone number when uh, the text message is going to send. So in this case, it's 24 hours prior to the appointment. And this is the, the, the script that's going to be sent. And then here's the email reminder that's going out as well. So really before you start doing or turning sending on in the system, the timeline button is very helpful for kind of getting an idea of what's going to happen with my client uh, and what's going to be sent out. So this 24 hour SMS, 24 hour email is what we call a sequence in the system. And if I decided, you know what, I want something different, I'm able to go up to the settings feature here. And then I simply go over to message sequence. And then I can see here the 24 hour e uh, SMS and email is set as the default. Now I could go in and simply edit this and add an additional step. So here you'll see text at one hour prior. It's going to send basically the appointment reminder script. And maybe I want to add more urgency. Maybe I want to add a different step. I simply just hit add new step. I'm going to tell the system what I want. And maybe we're going to send it at one hour prior to uh, the uh, event happening and you can customize the script on each one. We'll show you that in just a second here But this is just your your standard appointment reminder script So now what this is going to be doing and sending is it's going to be sending a text message one day prior We're going to be sending an email one day prior and then we're going to send a text message one hour prior Now one thing to note on this each time you send a text message out in the system that is a reminder count the emails do not count as a reminder count. So the more uh, steps that I add with this, as far as a text message, just know that it is using reminder counts to send those, okay? So we're gonna hit save on this. We could relabel it if we wanted to, um, but that's how you edit the sequence itself. Now, maybe you decide, well, I just want one of these other ones. Notice this one on the bottom, the SMS confirmation a 24 hour text message. So what this is going to do, it's going to send a text message immediately to the customer or as soon as the, the appointment reminder uh, system picks it up from Google Calendar, it will send out a text message uh, to your clients and completely editable as well. I can go in here or if I decide, you know what, none of these really work for what I need, I can go up here, add a message sequence and build my own. Okay. Once I get to the sequence that works for my business case and my business needs, I simply go to settings and then I go to default reminder settings. And this is where I change the default sequence. So right now it's set to the default 24 hours prior and a 24 hour email. If I decided I wanted that confirmation 
in the 24 hour text, uh, I would choose that uh, instead. And then it would save and it'll resync the calendar to update to that sequencing. To check out what I'm going to be saying, I simply go to Edit Reminder Scripts. So I'm under Settings, Edit Reminder Scripts, and then I just click the little pencil button here. And this is a preview or essentially the messaging that's going to be sent out. So this is just a default appointment uh, reminder comp template here. Reminder your appointment at the date and time, uh, put your business name in, and confirm yes or no to, to cancel. You can completely customize that statement. You can make it in Spanish. You can say, uh, you know, to reply yes, uh, to cancel, call, da 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 number, and make them call you to cancel. Down below, I can also see what the email message is going out. So as requested, your uh, appointment reminder with such and such, and sign for the business or whatever I want to write here in the emails, okay? So very customizable. Same thing here if I want to create a different script, you know, that maybe I want to do a one uh, a confirmation script that says, hey, we have you booked. And then uh, maybe a text like, hey, I'll see you tomorrow would be a 24 hour prior to the event. So lots going on with Google Calendar. It really provides some of the most flexibility in the system for us. Um, if you get stuck or having an issue, reach out to us on the chat box down here. Uh, happy to, to get on a Zoom call if necessary. Otherwise, usually we can uh, send us a message here and we can help uh, via the, the, the message system. One last step or one thing to mention prior to, to leaving, once I've got everything pulled across and ready to go and I've checked the timeline, I simply need to go up to hit send messages, top right hand corner of the system, and that will actually start sending messages. So if you don't have that enabled, it's not going to do that. Um, reach out to us if you have any other questions. Thank you so much.